If you are between the ages of 10 and 93, you've probably seen this clip from Rick and Morty. Old blue-haired man, Rick, who's a robot building genius, literally me, built a sentient robot for the sole purpose of passing butter. What is my purpose? Pass the butter! The fitness gram pacer test. You're probably thinking, why not just grab the butter yourself? Good question. Moving on. Mr. Rick initially starts with all of these components strewn around, and then in the next scene, five seconds later, he has this bot. Not gonna lie, this 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 is probably gonna take me more than five seconds to build, you know, maybe eight seconds, ten seconds, a month. This bot has the ability to look around, ask questions, what is my purpose? Take responses, pass the butter, locate butter move to said butter, but of course the most important functionality is that it is sentient. It is able to process the depressing nature of life. What is my purpose? You pass butter. Oh my god. To make an authentic butter passing robot, we're gonna split our build into three sections. Firstly, the design, basically making all of these components into that. Secondly, we've got our electronics, giving us our motor control, which gives us our movie forward and our gripping options. Finally, step number three is a sentient robot brain with vision feedback. Yeah, this this is this is this is gonna be hard as fuck. First thing I want to replicate is this track design. There's three wheels, and I'm pretty sure when the robot moves, these things do not spin. I'm putting that down to some funky ass cartoon logic and I've developed this system. We've got two wheels instead of three and I've replicated the tracks using this thermoplastic polyurethane that took a few tries or just TPU if you're not a dumb nerd. And because the entire feasibility of this robot depends on this system working, I've jumped straight to some electronics, i.e. these motors and subsequent control system. Check out this, when I designed and printed these tracks, I printed them in this position. As the plastic cooled out the nozzle of my 3D printer, the internal structure of the plastic decided that it quite liked this position. When I try then to bend that position using my wheels, I get this. Eternal screams of pain as the motors try to overcome their stall current and not a lot of movement. So I thin down those walls, meaning we've got less resistance to our movement and I can go squidgy squidgy with little to no resistance. Thing is, this thing's about as frail as a 120 year old, meaning these divots are having a hard time fitting into their wheel slots, which in turn is causing this sort of movement. We've still got those slight screams of pain, but at least we've got some movement. Thing is, sometimes that misalignment causes the track to get lost, causing motors to stall. So we need some other form of movement protocol here that isn't complete. <laughs> Guys, I got it. State of the art system. Never before see yeah, they're 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 just they're just they're just fucking wheels. Don't hate the player, hate the game sucker, because this works really well. We get our options for turning and we get forwards and backwards movement. Well that was close. Next I've aimed to replicate this head. This microcontroller will tell our motors from earlier where and when to drive, as well as these arm motors, which will come a bit later. The brain also connects to a camera so we can get our sight to identify butter. How that actually works, that'll, 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 that'll come later. <coughs> In the show, the arms have three angles of rotation. Here, here, and here. I'm condensing the first and second one down to one motor, and then the third one I'm uh, getting rid of because I think I don't need it. Also, the butter's not actually physically grabbed in the show. It's this little platform that the butter sits on, apparently telepathically, at least initially. So I've gone and made this platform that our theoretical butter that I haven't bought yet is going to sit on. Meaning we can now test it. Wanna see me fall, I didn't, I didn't fucking work at all. <laughs> Apparently I can't. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, turns out my code is actually correct. It's just that every single one of these micro servos that I have in my room is broken. Here, I'm just trying to send the exact same angle to both of these motors time and time again. You can see that there's a little bit of jitter between their movements and largely it's okay, but then sometimes it does stuff like that and it gets stuck in the middle. That's not super desirable movement. Do you want to know how I broke all of these servo motors? Flashback 
to yesterday. I am not making this shit up, okay? I have this light in my room that sometimes I use to get better lighting, and I have my robot over there. Externally powered, by the way, externally powered, okay? I'm gonna turn this light off, okay? And look, look, I'm gonna try to get this on camera. Okay, I'm going to turn the light on. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> what? Why, why does it move? It's externally powered. I managed to capture the moment these server motors officially died on camera by turning on my light switch, only connected to my servo through the wall socket, monitor, HDMI cable, and then finally the Pi. Yep, absolutely only the best robot building on Robotkiss. You are truly welcome, guys. Uh, anyways, onto something that actually works. For the middle segment, we need to somehow replicate this sort of movement. Now, I thought of a few ways of doing this. Perhaps I could put an actual mini servo in here, but I decided instead just to opt for putting a big ass servo on the end and making this servo horn act as this part of the robot. I chucked together all of those components we've talked about, and now we finally have movement. I go forward. I go backward. And its arms even move. Or one of them did. So now we can move to butter, but how are we gonna actually see the butter? Well, we have to get the camera active. The camera quality is pretty ass, but at least it allows the robot to see. To identify and move to butter, the robot needs two key pieces of information. Where in the frame the butter is, and how far the butter is from the vault. To do this, I've devised an angle system, and be warned, I basically came up with this in a fever dream, so it's a little bit strange. Across our frame, I've made a scale. At the leftmost side of the scale is 0 degrees, which is our left side of the frame, and at the rightmost side is 90 degrees. Everything between it is therefore 0 to 90 degrees, with the centre being 45 degrees. This is to emulate how a camera sees the world. If we pick up the butter at zero degrees, that means we're in the left of the frame, and we can actually pivot our robot so that the butter now becomes center of the frame, and then the robot can start moving towards it. So initially, I'm just gonna try capture it in the center of the frame. The center of the water bottle appears to be around 45 degrees, positioned in the center of the image. So that works pretty well. The center of the water bottle appears to be at approximately 20 degrees from the left. It's not too bad, it's not a water bottle. The center of the water bottle appears to be at approximately 80 degrees. Not the world's best performance, and the butter is also quite wide, so it's kind of spanning over multiple angles, which I think is what's making the robot a little bit confused. I think I might have to develop a different system. Okay, my new system uses QR codes. QR codes typically embed information like links, but I've written a code that allows me to embed words. These two words represent the two states that the robot can actually be in, not butter and butter. Using a QR code detection algorithm, we can actually detect in the frame where the QR code actually is. If we detect that it actually is butter, we can actually make our robot do something. For example, right now, I'm just gonna get it to say butter. Butter. The best thing about this system is that using some fever dream mathematics, I can actually get an estimate of just how far this QR code is from the camera. Mix in movement and you get a robot that actively doesn't hunt anything that you say is not butter. No. But actively hunts anything that you say is butter. How long the robot actually drives for is dependent on how far away this butter QR code is from the robot. So for example, for about 0.2 meters, it drives for about that long. Increase the distance to over here, and it's gonna drive longer. The objective is to get it to hit the QR code, of course, and you can just mess around with the numbers to get it to go faster or slower. I've linked the brain of the butter robot to a neural network, so now all I need to do is send in a photo of its prime purpose, and it, uh, it, uh... I exist to assist, process data, and now, describe butter. What is my life? Oh my god. And it has, a it has an existential crisis now every time it's shown butter. Now time to fulfill your purpose! What is my purpose? Pass the butter. Butter. Thank you. Oh.